Thank you and uh, thanks uh, Shushilji for inviting me. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be uh, back in India, especially in, in, in Bombay at the BSE. I know after lunch sessions are mostly difficult and you know when I used to work for a bank, uh, banks do something called as ALM and any, such, any session that is post lunch we used to call it uh, after lunch management. You know, so I know it's a little difficult going to be uh, managing uh, uh, yourself and, you know, and, 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 and keeping yourself awake uh, post-lunch, uh, but, but we'll see. I mean, I'll, I'll hopefully try to bring some perspectives in the U.S. Still December, I used to be a faculty at the University of Connecticut. Connecticut, as you know, is, uh, is, 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 is the hub for hedge funds. Greenwich is, is, is basically the place where you have uh, all the hedge funds very close to New York. It's about uh, less than 100 miles from New York, and is the is the hub for hedge funds. Like, for instance, Hartford in the U.S. is the is the hub for insurance companies. New York is the hub for banks. Uh, Greenwich happens to be the hub for hedge funds. And you know, as a faculty at the University of Connecticut, I used to interact with hedge funds quite a lot. Um, I used to be a trader with J.P. Morgan before uh, before I you know. Uh, was at I'm Ahmedabad and Adi Kanpur. So it did have a fairly uh, quantitative perspective to life and um, have done trading for a living for, for quite a few years before, before becoming an academic. So I'll, sh I'll try to share some perspectives on, uh, on what hedge funds do in the US and perhaps how some of that stuff can be useful here. Okay? A lot of things are changing as we speak, uh, especially uh, a lot of quantitative investment strategies um, are, are changing. And uh, the objective is that, you know, in some sense, we haven't gotten to that cycle where, you know, a lot of trading strategies are quantitative in nature. You look at, you know, perhaps it's becoming now because let's say you're trading the nifty options, you have 50 different strikes, 25 ports, 25 calls, and, and being able to manage that and, you know, see trading opportunities uh, intraday or, you know, let's say over a couple of weeks um, is quite difficult unless you are into, you know, basically do some kind of an algorithm. Not algo trading for execution. You also do, you know, a lot of hedge funds do algo trading for execution, which I believe uh, with Colos here, you know, co-located servers, it's becoming a lot easier, despite the the STT that you have in India. But I'm not I'm not going to talk about the execution strategies, the TVAPs and the VWAPs of execution strategies. I'm going to talk about algorithms and quant quantitative trading as a decision, you know, support system. How to basically because it's 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 humanly impossible. Uh, to look at all kinds of, you know, technical indicators, quantitative indicators, fundamental indicators, pretty difficult to, ma you know, to, to take a look at all of those signals. So I'm going to be focusing on, um, on, on what are the trading strategies that hedge funds do. And the second part of my talk, I want to um, kind of, you know, uh, talk about the new things that, that are happening, uh, especially in the U.S. Uh, and how, uh, if you look at the last decade, you know, the last 10 years, or perhaps you know after the dot com you know uh, boom and bust a lot of trading in big banks in the us in hedge funds across the exchanges have become quantitative you just have algos trading doing 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 you 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 basically you know put the strategy and essentially make sure that the uh, the algos uh, run and, and 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 execute your trades so in some sense a lot of quants like me have become have been fairly successful as traders because you know a lot of things are quantitative now and uh, uh, a lot of old school traders you know even I mean I, I remember when I used when I joined JP Morgan in Hong Kong there were a lot of these Chinese Hong Kong traders who have been who have been trading for 30 years but as technology has evolved and you know it's become a lot more mathematical a lot more quantitative they, they perhaps feel that you know uh, they have uh, they don't have that competitive advantage anymore but now, thankfully, in the U.S., in the last 10 years, you find that, I mean, not, not necessarily 10 years, maybe in the last three, four years, you find that the, the, the typical trader is now has, has his revenge against the, quanti the, the quants. Because a lot of, you know, a uh, lot of uh, entry barriers to becoming a quant, like, for instance, to be able to code, to be able to write algorithms, to be able to understand math, 
all of that has become a lot simpler. So even you know, a trader who has a very good feel for the markets and trades pretty successfully can now become, can make a quant obsolete because you know, a quant can only think in mathematical terms, think where there are price discrepancies, relative value trades. Those are the kind of domains that, you can, that he typically thinks uh, in, in, in. But a, a, a normal, you know, normal trader would have a, what I call a, a gist of, a kind of a synopsis of fundamental plus technical plus quant. Uh, strategy. So, you know, intuitively we'll have a feel for which, which, which strategies will work and which won't. So, the second aspect, the second part of my talk, I'll focus on uh, how it's become a lot easier for conventional traders to beat quants now. Okay, so the wheel is turning it, turning back, and the power is, the, you know, the, the power, the force, as, 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 as one might say, is now back with, with, with the conventional traders. And that's something that might be useful for an audience like this, especially in, a, in India, because we don't have, still don't have too many quant traders, uh, you know, except the, the larger houses here, we, you know, we, we typically don't have very large, uh, you know, uh, quant houses here. So let me just talk about what are the, um, so, so hedge funds in the U.S. have, especially in the last decade, have employed a lot of quant strategies. Okay, I'm going to do a simple case study, talk about uh, a very successful strategy um, uh, in the U.S. For instance, about seven years back, before, before the subprime crisis, almost uh, more than half of all hedge funds used to call themselves strategy would be convertible arbitrage. Okay? So I'm going to talk about what convertible arbitrage is, how, bas how basically people make money there, and uh, how you can perhaps use the, ch some, some, the, the change in technology that has happened in the last three, four years, introduce you to that, and how you, know, you can become people who, who don't have much of a math background, don't have much of a coding background, can now you know, become pretty sophisticated traders. That's what I'm going to talk, you know, focus on the second part of the, tra the, second, the, second, the second half of the, tra of the talk. So, you know, with the, with the advent of algorithm-enabled trading, so algorithmic uh, trading, a lot of uh, quants have made traders obsolete. Because, uh, you know, you can, no, no conventional trader can respond in, you know, in, 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 even in seconds, okay? Forget milliseconds and microseconds. Now, algos trade in microseconds in the US, okay? Um, even in Europe, for instance, Europe, Japan, a lot of trades happen in microseconds, okay? Microsecond is 10 to the power, you have, a million seconds, a million microseconds in one second. Okay, so execution is really fast. Okay, so if there are, you know, uh, if there are, there are, there is, a, there is an opportunity. There are algorithms which basically trade and you know remove those, remove those, those arbitrage opportunities. I believe that trading is becoming pretty fast now, especially in the in BSE, for instance. Now you can have execution capabilities uh, in microseconds. Okay, I, I saw some of the, some some posters out there which says that 200 microseconds is what the trade, you know, how fast the trades are right now in BSE, and, and that's that's faster than what you have in NSE. So a lot of uh, you know algorithms, both as a, as decision support system and also as execution systems, have made the conventional traders obsolete, and it became you know they had a competitive advantage. Uh, if you would like. But now, especially in the last three years, three to four years, there's new technology that's available, which has, which now enables traders, conventional traders, to have their revenge on the quants, okay? So con conventional traders now, with, with, the, with, the, with the benefit of this new technology, allows them to become as sophisticated as the quants, because you, know, you, don't need to, you don't need to necessarily know how to write a code, you don't necessarily know, need to know how, how to do delta hedging. A lot of those, you know, intuitively, you, can, you, sh you, you now be, would be able to do. I'll try to show some of, some of that, so that you know you just don't don't hear me talk, but also see what are the new technologies that are out there, which you can perhaps use. It will it will come to India as well, uh, but you know it just want if you want to be ahead of the curve, that might be something that you would find useful. So I, and I believe that a lot of traditional traders uh, in India can benefit from this trend in the U.S.